So how do we treat laminitis? Laminitis is a medical emergency. And the larger the horse, the more severe the medical emergency is. But in all horses, treating laminitis as early as possible to lessen the separation that can occur and to treat the pain and inflammation is paramount. Preventing laminitis as a part of treating disease is a very important thing we do in the hospital. Horses that have the increased risk factors which could cause laminitis will be preemptively treated with ice, with padding on the feet and with anti-inflammatories in order to prevent laminitis from occurring. The treatment options available to us in treating laminitis are numerous. Initially we want to restrict exercise in order to lessen the distraction forces on the hoof. We want to cool the feet in order to provide some comfort and decrease the inflammation. We want to treat the inflammation and the pain with anti-inflammatories and painkillers. We want to provide weight distribution and cushioning to the foot in order to make the horse more comfortable in the first instance and to lessen the distraction forces which the horse will suffer as it's moving around the stable. We want to unload the feet. This can be done by encouraging the horse to lie down in deep bedding or by providing some low level sedation which will allow them to lie down for a larger period of the day. Conversely, it can be done by placing the horse in a laminitis sling which can remove a certain amount of the horse's weight off the front feet, making them more comfortable. The last approach that we need in treating laminitis is to deal with any secondary complications which arise, such as infections within the feet, any ulceration associated with horses that are lying down for extended periods of time. And we also must remember that some of these conditions are caused by metabolic diseases, such as Cushing's disease or obesity, in which instance diet modification and disease modification may be necessary. The images in front of us now are illustrating three of the most common situations where we encounter when dealing with laminitis. The horse in the top middle is suffering from an, a very acute bout of laminitis due to a, a systemic disease. You can see the ice bags we've placed on the lower limbs in front in order to cool the limbs and to decrease the blood supply to the feet in order to prevent the toxins and trigger factors from reaching the laminate. We're cold hosing in order to provide the same relief to the hind feet. This horse has laminitis pads placed on its front feet, which you can't see very clearly in the image. But these are soft pads which we place on the soles of the feet to provide comfort and support to the sole. The image on the bottom left is the image of a chronic laminitic foot. We can see splaying and deformation of the hoof capsule due to the chronic dislocation of the laminae as they are trying to grow in an abnormal direction. These feet need radiographically guided trimming and therapeutic shoeing to lessen the deformation of the hoof capsule caused by the chronic laminitis and to promote the normal hoof anatomy to grow in its stead. The image on the bottom right is the most severe situation that we can present, be presented with. This is acute foundering where the hoof capsule acutely becomes totally dislocated from the pedal bone, causing severe pain and in most instances, unfortunately, this is an irretrievable situation which will result in either the death or the euthanasia of the animal. We talked a little bit about therapeutic shoeing. We can see in this animal we've got a laminitic stance where the horse is bearing most of its weight by placing its hind limbs underneath it. It's also a lot more lame on the right front leg than it is on the left front leg which is causing the head nodding. This is due to an infection present within the right front foot which is contributing to an increased lameness there despite the fact that it's got laminitis in both front feet. Several days after a course of antibiotics, appropriate pain management and therapeutic shoeing, we can see a resolution of the lameness to a large degree and the horse is moving much more comfortably. The images presented in front of you now are 
again the images of a chronic laminitic. This horse has had laminitis for an extended period of time which has caused abnormal hoof growth. The image on the top left shows the abnormal curvature and splaying of the hoof as it grows in a curved fashion away from the pedal bone. X-rays of this foot would indicate the position of the pedal bone within that hoof capsule and which would allow us to trim the horn accordingly. The image on the bottom shows that the horn has been trimmed in accordance with the x-rays to provide a normal weight-bearing sole and to remove the excess horn which has grown on the toe. Once the radiographically guided trimming has been completed, the horse has had a wooden clog placed on its foot. This clog has a raise at the heel, a soft pad material underneath the sole and is encased in cast material in order to provide a secure cushioning for the horse as it walks. The curvature of the sole of the wooden clog provides a, what's called a breakover, which allows the horse to move more easily and turn in any direction. As we discussed earlier, removing the weight off the feet of the horse during the initial phases of laminitis is quite important. The reason we want to remove some of the weight off the feet is the less weight pressing down on separating dislocating laminae, the less separation we occurs and it minimizes the structural changes which occur. The, the image you see in front of you is the image of a horse in a laminitis sling which is set to remove up to 150 kilograms body weight off the front feet of the animal which not only relieves a lot of the pain which is suffered as the horse's weight bearing, but also allows new growth of horn to occur unimpeded by the laminitis. So, treating laminitis. So far we've covered some of the aspects of the treatment of laminitis. We've gone through placing the horse in the laminitic sling or encouraging it to lie down in order to remove its weight from its feet. We've talked about radiographic guided trimming of the feet and assessment of the blood supply to the hooves. Medical treatments provide a large part of the treatment of laminitis. The pain and inflammation which occur as a result of the disease need to be treated with anti-inflammatories and analgesics. There are medications also which can be aimed at increasing the blood supply to the damaged hoof. Overall, the medications that can be given in the initial stages and in the chronic stages of laminitis are beneficial in providing a better quality of life for the animal during its rehabilitation period after the initial onset of the disease. One important aspect to realise with laminitis is that metabolic diseases may have a very significant influence on the hooves and the pedal bones of your horse. Obesity, insulin resistance and various other metabolic diseases can result in altered metabolism in the, in the laminae of the feet. This altered metabolism can weaken the cell tight junctions, the ad adherence of the pedal bone and the horn can become weakened, which can cause slow insidious separation of the pedal bone from the hoof capsule, which can result in pain and laminitis. Accurate diagnosis and identification of the metabolic diseases which may be affecting the laminitic horse is very important as it will guide not only the treatment of the horse but the prognosis for the horse in its recovery period. It's also very important once these metabolic diseases have been identified to institute diet modification and weight management especially in our obese patients as these may be critical in determining the outcome for the horse along with the other foot treatments. That's the end of our seminar in, on equine laminitis. I'd like to thank you all for your attention and hopefully you can take away not only some of the critical aspects in how to identify laminitis in your horse, but also some of the options that are available to you through Troytown Equine Hospital for the treatment of your horse.